Aloha, my name is Kelly King, Maui County Council Member and Vice President of Pacific Biodiesel Technologies. I'm here today with my husband, Bob King, founder and CEO of Pacific Biodiesel, to share with you our perspective on the benefits of the circular economy and how locally produced biodiesel can play a major role. In my position as chair of the Council's Climate Action Resilience and Environment Committee, I'll also give you my thoughts on the recent Global Climate Change Conference in Scotland, COP26. I attended the two-week conference as a delegate from ICLE USA, the US branch of the global ICLE organization that works with local governments on sustainability issues around the world. My position on the board of directors is fairly new, so I was surprised by the email invitation in mid-September that said, quote, as a female leader in the Pacific Islands, yours is a voice that needs to be heard globally from Glasgow, end quote. ICLE has 24 secretariat offices around the world, and our membership includes about 100 countries. At COP26, we were able to share a pavilion with the Scottish government who hosted the event. Highlights of my time at COP26 included speaking on panel discussions at the Japan Pavilion, the US Climate Action Center, and our own ICLE Scottish government pavilion. The discussions and presentations all had their own flavor, but much of my messaging involved the importance of multi-level commitments and sincere action at the ground level. In fact, however worded, the tenets of the circular economy came up consistently, local action, collaboration, and equity, also referred to as a just transition. The themes of the Japan Pavilion were the EPA relying on local government input. And if you see up in the upper left-hand corner here, Michael Reagan from the EPA was a part of our panel. The US climate action focused on being all in and this was a message that local governments are making commitments, even when our national governments may not be. ICLE, on the bottom picture, the ICLE Multi-Level Action Pavilion, we focused on talking about collaborations with county to county, city to city, and then also vertical collaboration between counties, states, and the federal government. So we're going at all levels and working on this issue consistently and collaboratively. One important discussion that featured Hawaii Governor David Ige, shown here second from left, brought in a youth speaker virtually from the Global Youth and Mayors Forum who laid out the expectations of her generation, that their leaders do more to protect their future. She was clear that we are not doing enough and that economics and corporate interests have overshadowed the climate change issues. Also at this presentation, it was notable that Governor Ige made the point that we cannot stop at carbon neutral we have to get to carbon negative in order to affect the necessary transformation. We Indeed, we know from those who continue to deny both pandemics, COVID and climate change, that those of us who are committed to turn things around have much more to do than just our part. We have to make up for the non-actors. Fortunately, the circular economy concept supports climate action by focusing on local business for local revenue, recycling and reusing what used to be discarded as waste and doing it in a way that respects all residents, honors local culture, and does not overburden the lower income echelon. Dr. Kamana Beamer, shown here from the University of Hawaii, created the Aina Aloha Economic Futures Program to develop a playbook for the circular economy using traditional values. He's quoted here as saying, there were calls for an economic reset to turn an inevitable economic crisis into an opportunity to grow a more diverse, sustainable economy. And this is a reaction to some of the over-tourism you've heard about um, from Hawaii, where we were inundated even before the pandemic with high numbers that were just not sustainable. And last year, Maui County was invited to participate in Ikle's Circle City pilot project as one of only four United States municipalities to join the program. As part of this modeling, we will exchange best practices, policies, and technology with other municipalities. We'll collaborate with leaders like Mayor, Mayor Arve of Turku and others on the Global Executive Committee. We'll be developing additional community-based strategies that recognize and build on Maui County's unique culture and environment, and the expectation that we will become a global leader and a case study for island community sustainability. Speaking of models, I'm proud to introduce our own company, Pacific Biodiesel, now in our 26th year of sustainability as a shining example of the circular economy. 
My husband started this company as a recycling project to turn used cooking oil into clean burning renewable fuel. And we kept the focus on community based even before the concept of the circular cities was conceived. It was the right thing to do, create local jobs, keep the revenue in our community and provide energy security for Hawaii. The company started with a pilot project in the Central Maui landfill and continues to grow, adding local value added products and expanding our customer base to displace ever more imported petroleum with locally produced renewable fuel. Our farm renowned for sunflower production on Maui is farming carbon neutral and working toward carbon negative as inspired by our governor. And now I'd like to introduce my husband, Bob King, to continue the presentation and give you more details about how we have successfully turned this company into a model for the, the circular economy. Mahalo. Hello, this is Bob King. Thanks, Kelly, and um, uh, aloha, everybody. I'd like to talk a little bit about Pacific Biodiesel and what we're doing here in Hawaii. And with this goal of full circle sustainability. Um, we've been in the biodiesel industry for 25 plus years. We've been farming for almost eight years now in Hawaii in a variety of different crops. And I'd like to share a little bit about what we've learned and how we see the future unfolding. In our mind, the way things work is we we have to have this circle of, of production in the islands. Um, we're about the furthest away from other resources of any community in the world, 2,500 miles to the nearest other civilization. So we think a lot about islanding and island, island style, which means, um, really doing for ourselves as much as possible. So when we make biodiesel, we've been making it out of waste cooking oil and animal fats in the islands, bringing in extra from outside the islands, but we wanna do more now. We wanna farm our oil crops here to make the fuel, but we realized very early that it needed to go through the path of food. So we farm as sustainably as possible and we originally make uh, culinary oil for food. And in a rotation of our oil crops on the farm, we also grow other food that is not oil, oil crops. But um, so it's a, a way to boost both food and fuel production in the islands. Now this oil that we make into culinary oil will eventually end up either, either consumed or in the waste use cooking oil bin at the back of the restaurant, which we pick up and make into fuel. Love that path. On top of making renewable fuel as efficiently and cost-effectively as possible, we also have these all these other health issues for the islands because we're doing it here in the islands. Um, biodiesel is not toxic, so we don't have uh, leaking fuel tanks causing groundwater aquifer contamination or marine uh, contamination. This is biodegradable and non-toxic. Burning biodiesel, all, all renewable fuels, will reduce our greenhouse gas emissions as well. And all this is being done in, in our community, which keeps the dollars here. That means jobs here, uh, money that we're not sending out of, out of our um, state, out of our economy to others. And if we can also incorporate how we do business with, with the local culture in Hawaii, the Hawaiian moon calendar using uh, native Hawaiian farming ideas, methods, but integrating them into this new style of, um, of food, and fuel, it's it's really a nice uh, it's a nice and correct way to do farming. We are lucky enough to have some other partners who also see the vision and are um, are talking about it, such as Polynesian Voyaging Society and 
how biodiesel fits into this model that they see for a more sustainable future. So on the biodiesel portion, when we get to that uh, part of this, this circular economy, that's what we've been doing for 25 years. So we're, that's for me personally, that's where my, my expertise is at. And biodiesel is a fuel for all diesel engines and it's renewable, way less toxic and uh, non-toxic biodegradable. So it's, um, it's a great product. And what we realized is when we try to do this, use this fuel for the new cleanest, spectacularly clean and efficient tier four diesel engines, we need a distillation. So we've changed from our, our previous style of uh, making biodiesel, which was, which was great for the engines we were working with in the, in the 90s and 2000s. But the new tier four engines, we needed a better product. And we've, and we've created it, um, distilled biodiesel. It's spectacular fuel for new clean diesel engines. So this new biodiesel process is a little bit more involved than the, our older process, quite a bit more involved. It, um, it involves distillation of a, of a liquid that's, um, that has a very, very high flash point. So it's, it's, a, it's a robust uh, plant. Uh, we've created this in a 5 million gallon a year model here in Hawaii, which is pretty small for a distillation plant. Typically, they're 50 or 100 million gallons a year. The renewable diesel plants, another factor of 10. They're 500 to a billion gallons a year. So unless you've got a lot of material, a lot of material local, those plants are going to be pulling very long supply chains, logistic chains to, to fill their products and export their products. Uh, again, uh, my, my mantra is all sustainability is local. So how do we, how do we scale correctly for, for us in Hawaii or, or maybe you in, in um, Okinawa or the other, the other island nations in the Pacific? It is technical. Um, in order to get this super clean, nice fuel, we, it's, it's a very automated plant. And, but our, our guys um, are handling it. Uh, most of our operators born and raised in, in, in Hilo on the big island. And, and they've, they love this. They love running the plant. So once again, this fuel, when you make distilled biodiesel out of whatever you want to make it out of, trap grease, uh, cooking oil, or virgin oil, it's all going to be this clean, pure fuel that can go in these modern, efficient diesel engines. This is the Honolulu Airport 10 megawatt um, power backup power system that'll run the airport, 100% biodiesel powered. The Army has been a great customer of ours with Hawaiian Electric. This is the Schofield Barracks 50 megawatt fast start diesel plant. This plant runs 100% biodiesel, tier four emission levels, and it can be go from cold to 50 megawatts in less than two minutes. So that allows them to keep these engines turned off most of the time, let the PV and the wind carry, the other renewables carry the load, and then waiting till the last minute when they really need the power and it's there every time. We're also working on the marine side. So marine tugs and, and ships are, are gonna be a challenge for renewables. Um, this is a tier four, a native tier four engine. Um, this is a V12, 6,000 horsepower. Um, actually, this is a, oh, sorry, this is a V16, V16, <laughs> 6,000 horsepower. Uh, Webtech, which used to be GE Transportation. Uh, this engine was designed from the ground up as a tier four, super clean, super efficient. 
and will run on 100% biodiesel. And our local uh, tug company, Young Brothers, uses a similar package, except it's their uh, inline eights, half of this engine, this exact engine, just halves, um, two of those in each of their tugs. And so we're working with them to convert to 100% biodiesel. These also run power gen, just like those others. So there's a, there's the diesel engine has come such a long ways. So it's an amazing product. Now we just have to get the correct fuel into it. And this is a solid, dependable part of our energy future and very secure. So thank you. The future's here. Uh, we're doing it. You can too.